Hi, so today's video is about how to draw transparent fabric. I, Bhargavi Rawal, strongly believe anybody can draw. So, before you start uh, designing, it's very important that you know what fabric we are going to use. There are different kinds of fabric like silk and cotton and chiffon, organza. So it's very important that before you start making any design for your dress, you should know what fabric you are going to use. Today's video, I'm teaching you how to draw a transparent fabric. Now, every fabric has their own different characteristics. Some have uh, different textures, some are very flimsy, some are shiny. So we have to identify what is the character of the fabric we are going to use. So here I'm starting first with the basic croquis. Uh, I'm giving the features, my hair. So the basic idea is ready. Okay, so if I'm doing a transparent fabric, before I uh, design anything, I'll draw my inner dress. So let's say I'm starting first with a bustier. So I'll make the inner piece first. Maybe it's a bra top, which is ready. And I'm going to show you how to draw an organza. So this is an organza shirt. Now, if you could understand uh, the feel of the fabric, it's got slight uh, uh, shine to it, but it's not very flimsy. I see this organza. You can see it's transparent. You can see through the skin. You can see through the lining of the dress, but they do not have many crease lines. So that's how the organza looks. So if I'm supposed to do an organza, I'll start first with the inner. So, and let me do a shirt. So I'll draw a collar. Now understand collar always starts from behind. Give the back collar. I'm giving the button line. Just making the bra top. The armpit. The armhole. The shirt is tucked inside. So there will be a clean crease line happening around the waist. So shirt skirt. The crease line would always be near the fold of the hands. I'll give the cuff. Okay. So, once the base line is ready, let me give the highlight. So, let me do the fingers first. While making the fingers, give the bone line. So, the fingers, adding the flesh to it. I'll be having one more video only teaching you all how to draw fingers. So keep subscribing to this channel. I will be uploading many videos. If you follow the channel nicely, you will be able to draw. So the second hand. Giving the finger first the thumb line. Give the bone line for your fingers. Okay. So, that. Yes. Oh, I'm giving the buttons. Now, oh, that's kind of my placket. Yeah. So, the transparent shirt, organza shirt is ready. Now, I'll erase off all the dark lines. My pencil line has to be very light. So, bring up all the lines. Now, these are the colors I'm going to use. For the skin, I use a Stedler color. Now, today, I'm, what I'm going to teach especially is how to use this color with as a water solubility. So, starting first with skin. Now, the best thing about Stedler is that they are water soluble. They work on layers. So, first, what you have to do is starting first uh, skin. Give your skin shading all over. Start with the lightest color. Now understand the skin which is bare. That is the neckline, the face, the fingers. All this thing uh, will make it slightly darker. But the skin which is underneath the fabric is going to be 
slightly lighter. Again, uh, understand the sides are always darker. So even when you're doing the shading, don't do a bland shading. Do the, uh, render it in a, like sides are darker. Okay, eye sockets are darker. So my first baseline of the skin is ready. The lightest color. Okay, so this is done. Now while coloring it with Stedler as a water soluble thing, uh, don't color it uh, very dark, do it lightly. Okay, now blending it, I'm just using a brush, dipping it in water and just blending it. Okay, remove the excess water and then just blend it. Now again, very important that while using a Stedler in water soluble, uh, please use a cartridge paper. Uh, your paper should be thick. It should be water absorbent. Many times I've seen uh, students use PK paper or uh, the executive bond paper. They do not work. It has to be a drawing paper. It has to be cartridge paper. They absorb uh, water. So please use a drawing paper. Okay, so I've colored the skin. So my first layer of the skin is ready. Now the best thing with Stedler is once you color it, once you uh, put it, uh, blend it with water, they become permanent. So, okay, it's dry now. Again, eye sockets are making it darker. Now this is one more darker tone I use. This is the second tone of my skin. Oh. Sides are darker. The neckline, I'm giving a collarbone. Now again, I'm blending it with water. Just using water to blend it. It gives you a lovely watercolor effect. So, I think it's very easy to use a Stedler with water. Okay. Now, what I'm doing is, this is one more method uh, which you can do. So, scribble the color on the paper, rough paper, dip the brush in the water, and then just blend it. I think this is slightly darker color. I'm using one lighter tone. Okay. The brush. So it's as good as using a watercolor. The color what I'm using instead of watercolor is the Stedler color. So I'm highlighting the skin. You can also do it this way. Instead of using it with a brush, directly use a pencil. And uh, again, the darker points. So the first skin color, the base color is ready. The second highlighting points that I'm using the second tone, the second color. Again, blending it. It's very important that you have to blend the color because otherwise the third layer which you put, uh, the water is going to mix. So uh, blend it completely with your brush. Okay. Yes, so my skin is done. Now I'm start with the rendering of the bustier. So it's a lovely reddish pink color. Now again, the color Stedler color, once used with water, it changes color. So this might look light, but the moment I blend it with water, it's going to go darker. Again, identify the darker tones. Sides are darker. Uh, below the bust is going to be darker. Uh, I've created a mask. So 
the brat of yolk. Now, this is the shading. I'm not coloring completely. I'm doing a very light shading. Now I'll blend it. And as you can see it's gone slightly darker. Okay. And below the bust, I'll make it darker, blending it nicely. I'm leaving it space for the uh, button placket for the overshot. Okay. So that goes for my base. Okay. I've blended it nicely. This is done. I think I'll add slightly a bit more of color. Wait. So I'm scribbling the color on the rough page and using the brush picking up the color from that rough page and then just adding yeah so sides okay so that's established the boost here is done okay now starting with your organza shirt now this is a quick way now Again, understood very clearly, I'm not coloring the whole shirt. I'm just highlighting the sides. I'm just highlighting the crease lines. Okay. Here also you can see the skin see through. Okay. Now collar, of course, it's got a double layer. So I'm going to make it slightly darker. The cuffs are going to be with double layer. So that I'm going to make it darker. You lose the transparency when there is double layer, right? Uh, the blue zone effect when you tuck inside a shirt. Okay, so that's done. Shading the placket is done. Another squeeze. Again, the crease line. So I'm just coloring, let's say, 30% of it. Yeah, that's about it. So then this is done, but I'll show you how to add it with the water. Now water gives you that glaze, it gives you that shine of the organza. Okay, so I'm adding the, just blending it with the water. Now the same thing if it was a chiffon shirt, the transparency would have been the same, but the crease line would be completely different, right? So you have to understand what fabric you are using. Based on your fabric, your crease line changes. Your illustration has to be self-explanatory. You need not just write that, okay, this is organza or this is chiffon. Your illustration has to speak. So, okay, the shirt is done. I'm just blending the crease line nicely. Okay, it's see-through. Blending the cuff. Cuff is not going to be transparent. Okay. And we are almost done. Now the finishing touches will be. Again, I'm adding more layer to the collar so it doesn't look transparent. Merge more color. Now your crease line also changes according to the uh, pattern, according to the cut of the dress. So if it's a loose fitted dress, if it's a tight fitted dress, the crease line would differ. Let's give the skirt. Now this I'm not doing it with water. I'm just using the regular pencil. 
Okay, so the shine, if you could see in the organza shirt, it's looking nice. Yeah, it looks like organza, good. Okay, now, the transparency, how will do the face. Now I'll give the features, I start with the second tone of my skin. I'll add the eyebrows, I'll add the eye features, I'm adding the nose, lips. Again for hair also, I always make it a point that to start with the skin color. So even if I want a black color, I start first with the skin color or the base color. Just slightly. Now I'm going, I want a darker hair, so I'm going for a dark one. The flow of my strokes would be according to the flow of the hair. Okay. Adding the brown color. Now, illustration, we of course need practice. So, I strongly believe that anybody can draw through practice, through right methodology. We can learn to illustrate. I'll be adding many videos on different texture, how to create a embroidered look or how to create a print. So subscribe to the channel and you'll learn quite a bit. Okay, so my hair is almost done. I'm highlighting the eyebrows, eyes, eyelashes. Okay, again, just adding more depth, the chin line. Giving the cheekbones. Okay. I'll do the lips later. What I'm doing is highlighting the, I'm just outlining. And gives a complete look to the dress. So the button placket in the crease line, a hose on, highlighting my creases. The shirt is tucked inside, the shirt is a bit big size, so there are more crease lines happening, giving an armhole, okay, highlighting the sides, the cuff. Understand where the crease falls. Because organza is a fluffy fabric, the shirt is, uh, the sleeves is looking voluminous. Okay. And let me do the lips.
while designing a dress there are many things you have to consider it's not only the fabric the trend we do a trend board we do a design development board inspiration board color boards so that's a completely different process when you're designing a dress i will be having a video on how to create a style board and a mood board and a story board and a client board so there's lots of research which goes into designing uh, there's lots of thought process which goes into designing here what i'm teaching is just one tenth of it that is just the illustration part of it okay giving the highlighting this piece okay now what i'm doing is i'm using a black pen and uh, now whatever understand where i'm giving the dark points so behind the collar wherever the shadow of the fabric falls so below the collar again if you could see over here i'm highlighting it more uh, the blue zone part of it the shirt which is tucked in sides darker again so i'm doing a thick and a thin line creating a shadow effect again crease line outlining it so i'm not completely outlining it uh, but only the darker points so if you're using stedler with water be very careful while using a black pen if it's a ink based pen it would bloat so let your water dry up completely and then you can outline it Okay, I'm using a sketch pen to give a darker. Again, highlighting it. The shirt is tucked inside. The shadow falling over there. A cuff, and yes. Keep subscribing to this channel. You will see many many videos coming up. Okay, so we are done, and yes, the transparency looks nice. What I'll add is slightly the background. It gives a complete look. Always don't leave your girl standing alone. Just give some background to it. It looks better. Okay, so we are. then i hope you enjoyed this video